Hi, my name is Maggie O'Grady, and I'm a senior attorney at the Project on Predatory Student Lending, which is part of Harvard Law School's Legal Services Center. Our mission at the project is to make it legally and financially impossible for fraudulent for-profit schools to harm students. And today's update is about one of our big class action cases, Sweet v. Cardona. Now, today's video is going to be an update on the Sweet litigation, what's happened recently, and what we can expect over the coming weeks and months. It's relevant for anyone who cares about borrower defense policy or feels their school has defrauded them. And it's primarily relevant for those of you who may be class members. Now, you are a class member in this litigation if you filed for borrower defense and have still not received a response, or if you filed for borrower defense and received a denial letter in December 2019 or later. The Sweet case was brought in June 2019. At the time, the case was called Sweet v. DeVos because the Secretary of Education was Betsy DeVos. The name has since been changed to Sweet v. Cardona to reflect the new Secretary of Education, but that doesn't change anything substantively about the causes of action or the underlying litigation, just the name. So the Sweet case was brought in 2019, and our named plaintiff, Teresa Sweet, had been waiting since 2016 for her borrower defense application to be decided. Now, borrower defense is a legal process by which students who have been defrauded by their schools can ask the government that their loans be canceled because they're the victims of fraud and they're federal loans that the government holds. The borrower defense process resulted in 170,000 claims that the government at this point was simply ignoring. Now, the law requires that the government respond to these claims in a reasonable time. They can't just let them pile up and ignore them, but that's what they were doing. So this case was about telling the Department of Education to do its job and tell students one way or the other if their loans were going to be canceled, if their borrower defense applications would be denied or approved. This case is not about broad-scale loan cancellation. Uh, it will not put money back in students' pockets automatically. And it's only for people who have filed a borrower defense application because their school defrauded them. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the recent developments in the case. And leading up to the October 2020 class hearing via Zoom was a settlement agreement. We reached an agreement with the government whereby they would decide borrower defense applications on the merits within 18 months. The problem is they breached that agreement. And that's what we told the judge in the Northern District of California, Judge Alsup, that the government was in breach of the agreement because they said they were deciding claims. But what they were doing, it turned out, was just sending hundreds and in some case perhaps thousands of denial letters that were form letters, basically rubber stamp no's, without telling students what evidence had been reviewed and the reasoning behind their decision and what students could do next. Our view was this did not represent a decision on a borrower defense claim on the merits, but really just the result of a sham process that the government had set up to find any way to get to know. We told the judge this, and he heard from 14 defrauded students during the, the hearing over Zoom, and also over 500 people attended and were active in the chat function, letting the judge know how schools had harmed them and how the Department of Education's delay and these form denial letters had also harmed them. In November 2020, the judge ordered that the Department of Education could no longer send out these form denial letters. And importantly that fall, he also ordered additional discovery in the form of documents and depositions that we were able to take of high-ranking government officials to find out what was going on with the borrower defense policy. Then in February 2021, we had another hearing where the judge once again said that we were entitled to additional discovery about this process. Now that leads us to the status of the case now. And the latest important milestone is that we filed a supplemental complaint on March 19th, 2021, which added claims to our original complaint. We told the judge that we have additional claims because not only was the Department of Education delaying and issuing borrower defense decisions, they, they had actually created a sham process. So when they claimed to restart the process and begin issuing decisions, it was not a genuine process. They were making arbitrary and capricious decisions in violation of the law, and we believe they have been violating students' constitutional rights by denying them due process of the law. 
The Department of Education was deciding claims, they claimed, but they weren't true decisions on the merits. They were just, again, simply a way to get to know. And this is unlawful. So what's next? More discovery, more documents, and the potential deposition of Secretary DeVos. Fully briefed and pending before a judge in Florida is whether or not we will have the opportunity to ask the former secretary questions directly about her personal knowledge of borrower defense. Then after that is summary judgment. In a jury trial, that would be when the, when the jury deliberates and decides what happens. In this case, which is an Administrative Procedure Act case being heard by a judge, he will look at all the evidence we submit in summary judgment and decide whether or not we win or lose. That's not been scheduled yet because of the additional discovery we're getting and some other pending motions involving supplemental complaint. When we know the timeline, we will update you. Now, I'm going to go through some of the key questions we often get about this case. And the first one is, when this case is over, will I get my money back? Now, the short answer to that is, if you have a valid bar of a defense claim, eventually, yes. We don't know the exact timeline. But again, this case is really about getting the government to decide claims on the merits. So if you have a valid claim, you should be approved. When will we know if we win? Um, that timeline has not been set yet. It will be after summary judgment, which will be um, at least a few months from now. And we're, we are not quite exactly sure. Now, if you've received a borrower defense denial, are you still in the class? Um, there may be some exceptions to this, but as I said in the outset, if you received a short denial letter in December 2019 or later, you are part of the class. Um, that is the short answer. If you are still waiting for your borrower defense decision, you are also part of the class. And you don't have to do anything to join the class. You are automatically part of it based on the status of your application. Now, is this case just for for-profit students? The answer to that is no. It largely affects for-profit students because for-profit students are the ones who have been defrauded largely by their schools and universities and who have valid borrower defense claims. But you can be a member of this class if you have filed for a borrower defense claim and have not yet received a response, whether or not your school was for-profit or non-profit. The project's mission is to make it legally and financially impossible for for-profit schools to operate because those are the ones committing the fraud. The next question, do you need to consolidate your loans? We get that a lot. Um, this is very complicated and will continue to be complicated. For purposes of the suite litigation and being a member of the suite class, you do not need to consolidate your loans at this point. That's something that we will continue to update you on. And will your loan stay in forbearance? Um, yes, your loans currently should be under forbearance under the CARES Act um, for COVID relief. We don't know exactly how long that will extend to, but that is the current status of loans. For purposes of this case, the government represented to the judge that all loans for all suite class members would remain in forbearance until this case is resolved. And again, we don't know that exact timeline, but for the foreseeable future, your loan should remain in forbearance. So to get more information, please follow us on Twitter. I hope this video has been helpful. You can also visit our website case page where we post the filings from the case. So if you want to dive into the transcripts, the judge's orders, what the judge has said, um, read the chat from the Zoom transcript in, 2000, um, in October 2020's hearing, you can look at all of those filings and papers, and we put updates there too. We hope this has been helpful. Um, for those of you who did attend that Zoom hearing in October 2020, I said this then and I'll say it again now. It is absolutely our honor and pleasure to represent you. You are all your best advocates, and it is, um, it is a pleasure to be litigating this case and working towards a fair resolution for the hundreds and thousands of students who have been harmed by these colleges and whose harm has been compounded by the department's actions. Thank you very much.